In the index markets, they'll, they'll close each day. You'll have an auction closing price. So the FTSE will actually close at 4.30, but a UK time, but actually you'll get the official closing price at 4.35 uh, p.m. That's after the auction. The auction is when the, the last flurry of buy and sell orders come into the market, and then you get your official closing price. Now, the next day, when the market opens, it will it will be often be opening above or below the previous day's closing price. And that's called, uh, you know, if you're opening above, it's called a gap up. If you're opening below, it's called a gap down. So I'm very much a master on gaps. I've been trading gaps for so many years. I started off in the banks. I used to have a Bloomberg terminal next to me and I literally just watched the FTSE day in, day out. Um, and yeah, I've been doing that for well over two decades now. And these closing gaps are fantastic um, if you know what you're doing. Um, not all gaps will fill, of course, but they are a great lifestyle trade. And they are particularly great when the markets are quiet. Yes, you will get these big gaps up when the markets are volatile, but actually when the markets are really volatile, the gaps are less likely to fill. So this is a great strategy to use when everything's very quiet and boring. In fact, I love trading a nice boring market because I'll make probably more money. Yes, there are great opportunities when the markets are volatile, but gaps are great when things are very quiet. The extreme gap, that is something different. We're not going to touch on that today, but that's when you're opening above the highest or lowest price from the day, uh, previous day's session. And again, the reason why these gaps are likely to fill is down predominantly down to that market function, because the market is reclaiming areas where no buyers and sellers have been matched up. It's a great lifestyle strategy as well because you don't need to be tied to your screen each day. You literally just need to find out well, where did the market close? And you can do this on the ASX as well. Um, where did it close for the day? And then the next day you can go through some filters to work out, well, is this a high probability gap or not? Um, they are low risk as well. They're often completed during the same day session. They work in bull and bear markets. That's really important. You've got to have a strategy which is recession proof. The markets these days are very volatile. Um, we're flipping in and out of bull and bear markets. And um, you want to have a strategy which is recession proof uh, and not tied to government policies and economic changes. And also, you know, they do enable full time profits trading part time. You just don't need to be at the screens all day long. So the formula selection that I use for gap trading, there's four filters. Um, you might be saying, well, if gaps are so great, Mark, why don't you just trade them every day? Well, yes, you can trade gaps every day, but you've got to have you've got to select which ones are high probability. It's no point in just trading every single one because not every single gap is going to close. So it, it's imperative that we do find out which gaps are likely, those high probability, high, high probability gaps that are going to fill on the same day. So we use four filters. We use pivot charts. We use hot and cold zones. We use patterns and we use market days. The filter I'm going to go over today is the pivot one. So that is... Uh, where we're opening in a specific area when looking at the previous day's data. And uh, if we do open in that area, there's a high probability of gap fill. So within the trading plan, as I said, we've got to select the golden gap trades to take. We've got to, which is that full filter approach. You're going to learn one of those full filters just now. You've got to have an entry. Well, that's easy. We know when we've got to get in for the gap. It's either at the open or just after the open when the risk reward is aligned. Um, it's very rare I'll get into a gap trade before the market opens, but there are some very rare occurrences that I will do that. Um, so the entry is very, very simple. The stop criteria I'm going to give you as well. And the exit parameters, well, that's easy as well. We know we're getting out just before gap close. So where that 
previous day's closing price is. So it, it, it's quite, it's relatively easy to build your trading plan here, your trading system for the gaps. So what we want to do is we want to we want to be looking at the pivot points. So if we open between um, R1 and S1, then there's a there's a very good chance, 70% chance that the gap is going to fill. So I've got on the table here, we, we offer this on our blueprint program. It's a daily report, it gives all the pivot points. You can get pivot points um, for free on the internet as well. There's various resources. If you want to find some uh, some resources, you can always email me. I'll, I'll give you the um, I'll give you the free resources to the pivot points. But I'm sure many of you are aware of pivot points. Um, but what we're looking at is R1 and S1. So if we look at the 4th of May, this was I, I always take examples from the previous day. I, I never cherry prick examples um, I don't need to go back in time to find oh this happened great this day I will often when I do a presentation just take the trade from the previous day because um, these trades present themselves so often and it's and, and it's very often that I'll be using the gap as a reason to be trading so this is from yesterday um, and this data is based on the 4th of May but it's it relates to the 5th of May trading session so you'll see that the FTSE on the 4th of May closed at 7.702, okay? And R1 for the day was 7.763, and uh, S1 for the day was 7.666. So as long as we open within this realm, there's a very good chance the gap is going to fill if the other filters uh, align as well. But you can trade it just on this as well. Now, yesterday, um, we did actually open within this realm, but we'd seen actually uh, a big sell-off, uh, a big two, three, three-day sell-off into a very key level on the daily charts, which basically marked the end of that sell-off, and there's a very good chance the markets were going to rally yesterday. So for me, I thought some of the gap was going to fill, but not all of it. So let's just look at the charts. Um, what you'll see on the charts is I put a, this is a daily chart. I put a line across this and you'll see that, um, throughout, you know, 2023, that 7745 is quite key. 7743 to 7745. Um, I put this big line going across it and you'll see that yesterday we were just touching on it. So we'd had, we'd have a, we'd had a, a, a retested this area in January we failed and then when, when we did bust up it was support and then we saw that big quick crash down in March it broke that area and then we we're back above it and then we've we've come through this area again and we've seen a, a sell-off which we've taken advantage of but yesterday um, that was a that was a key level that um, I was looking at on the FTSE and just to show you what I was looking at yesterday. So the, the, where the arrow is, this is where the markets uh, opened. So we, we've opened below R1. So we know that filter's good. Um, and we know that some of the gap is likely to fill because we are, we are opening um, below that R1 level. We don't need to look at S1 because we are not gapping down. We gap. We were gapping up yesterday. So remember that closing price on the FTSE was seven seven zero two, and we opened um, around seven seven forty one yesterday. Okay. So what what we what's happened in the market is it's popped. It's opened. It's popped its head above seven forty seven four four five, and then it's broken back below here. Now, given that we have the gap below at 7702, that's my reason to sell the market. Okay, because we've got that market function. We, we know the market's going to try and close some of that gap because we've opened between R1 and S1. 
Okay, there's a seventy percent chance that some of this gap is going to fill. I didn't think the entire gap was going to fill yesterday because, as I said, we've seen that big sell-off, um, and seven seven hundred is a big support area now. Um, so the market was due to have a bit of a rally yesterday, but certainly getting rejecting seven seven forty five yesterday, breaking down through it was your reason to get in, um, and really you could have your stop above the highs or a or you could have acceptance stop. Acceptance stop is another thing. You, you'll need to join us on another presentation to learn about that. But um, you know, you could have sold the market then as it moves through 7745 and really just followed this down on the five-minute chart. And look, you know, down here you've got a uh, pin bar reversal on the five-minute as well, and then you've got a double bottom here as well, which is a reason to come out of the trade. Um, so that was really how I approached uh, some of the gap yesterday. It wasn't a high probability trap uh, gap trade, but I did use the key level um, as a reason to get in of the, the failure above there. And um, I used the fact that we'd opened below, uh, between R1 and S1 as a reason that some of the gap was going to fill. Um, now, when the markets are very quiet, um, we are going into the summer season in the UK and the markets can quieten down. What you can do is that often if we're opening between R1 and S1, um, what I'll do is I'll take a 15% ATR spike against the direction of the gap. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, uh, we take a five-day average true range and we will take a percentage of that. And in fact, actually, we use the stop for our gap for these R1, S1 trades um, is 30% ATR, okay? So you need to take a 30% of that five-day ATR. And again, you, you can find out where what the five-day ATR is on the internet. Again, you can always email and I'll give you the free resource to that. But um, you take, for the stop for the gap, it's 30% ATR. And, um, but in the summer seasons, when it's quiet, what I'll do is if I've identified the gaps likely to fill, I'll, I'll wait for the market to open and I'll wait for a 15% ATR spike away from the gap. So just say, for example, yesterday I was doing it, um, the gap is down at 7702 and I, I'd be wanting the market to spike up away from the gap by 15% ATR. So in this 15% ATR yesterday, if I go back, it's actually on our reports, we put it out every day, but you'll see 15% uh, ATR yesterday was 10.8, so 11 points. And 30% ATR, which is your, is your typical stop the gap. So if you're selling for that gap, by the way, guys, you, you know that's what it was yesterday, it was 21.6. Um, the reason we used uh, a percentage of the ATR is that the system will adapt to different market conditions. So that's a really important one. Too many people have systems out there which are rigid and they will phase in and phase out. You'll have these great periods when they're working really well, but then you'll get these periods when they just don't work well. Um, what, what we do with this, the stop here is that as volatility increases, the stop will increase. And as volatility decreases, the stop will decrease. So it's mimicking what the markets are doing and it's adapting. Um, that's very, very important. But this 15% ATR spike, if we go back to the chart, it really is just as simple as coming to the FTSE each day at 8 o'clock UK time, waiting to see if we get a spike up of 15% ATR, which, as I said yesterday, was 11 points. Um, away from the gap and then you can just sell for the gap. You can either have a stop of 30% ATR or you can have a stop of 15% ATR. And then your targets, what I would do is I would definitely be taking a good 75 to 50% of the trade once you've made one to one. So if you're risking 11 points and you make 11 points, well, take 75% or 50% of your profits, and then you can run the rest of the trade down towards the gap close or up towards the gap close, because sometimes you know, you're gonna be gapping down. Um, I will take some questions at the end uh, of the presentation on this. I know you'll probably have some, um, but it's a lovely little lifestyle trade, guys. Um, 
And for those of you who had jobs or you're busy um, or you're down in Australia, you know, it's something you can do before dinner. Um, it, you know, it literally takes five minutes. Come to the screen. Is the gap likely to fill? Is it opening between R1 and S1? If it is, wait for the spike up, 15% ATR or spike down if it were gapping down. Have your stop loss and then you know where your target is and then the ultimate target is the gap close as well. And this works great um, as a lifestyle trade. All right. Um, so that was the the closing gap and the spike trade combined. As I said, I will take some questions at the end, but I'm going to hand you now over to Cameron, who's going to give you another type of gap trade, and it's based on fade the fill.